Hello. Uh, we just talked about the structure and operation of the VJT transistor. We looked at the first order model, a very simple model of the operation of the transistor. And now we're going to take a look at some of the non-idealities uh, that are not considered in that model. We call them the second order effects because they will be considered in a second order model, a um, more complex model of the transistor. However, we're going to be studying at least three of them uh, just because there are things that we want to keep into consideration when we are designing with transistors, just like we want to be aware of the limitations of op-amps or the non-idealities of op-amps when we were designing with op-amps. Uh, we also want to be aware of some of the limitations of transistors as we are um, putting together our designs. The first one we're going to talk about is the effect of base width modulation. In order to explain base width modulation, I'm going to redraw the uh, model of my MPN transistor. A little physical model uh, with collector base animator. And I'm going to forward uh, to bias the transistor in the linear region of operation or the forward active region. And for that, I'm going to apply a VVE voltage of around 0.7 volts and a collector emitter voltage greater than the saturation voltage of around 0.3. All right. Now, if we go back to the operation of the transistor, we have in the linear region, uh, the base emitter junction was forward bias. The collector base junction was reverse bias. Now, if you remember from the operation of the PN junction or of the diode, there is a depletion region um, across a PN junction. And in the case of a reverse bias PN junction, the depletion region extends further into the PN areas uh, the higher the reverse bias voltage we apply. And so what that implies is if we apply a collector emitter voltage, we are going to have a depletion region extending both into the collector and into the base. Um, and what that leaves us with is um, a base which has an effective width that is different from the actual physical width. The effective width, meaning the, the, the area where electrons coming from the emitter can recombine, uh, is smaller than the physical width because there are no, there's no recombination going on in the depletion region. It's depleted, it's depleted of mobile charge. Uh, and so we have in this case, as you can see, this will be the effective width of the base. I'm going to label it with effective. Um, now, as I increase my VCE voltage, that depletion region extends further into both the collector and the base. But in the case of the base, because the base is lightly doped, um, it's going to extend even further than into the collector for the same amount of uh, increase in VCE. The reason for that is because it needs to extend further physically in order to uncover the same amount of, uh, of charge. And so what we will have I may represent it like this, as VCE increases is um, a higher reverse bias voltage across the junction is going to give us a depletion region that extends further into both the base and the collector. Like I said, it's going to be typically further into the base for the same voltage. So what's the effect of that? Well, we just studied uh, our IV characteristic for the transistor and we said, oh, let me center that a little more. And we said, after we enter the linear region, we have that IC is approximately constant for increasing values of VCE. So it looks something like this. Once we are, are past that 0.3 volts saturation voltage, our output current is constant regardless of VCE um, and its value is just determined by the base current.
Now, what's happening here, though, is as VCE increases, as we just saw, now we have a, a smaller effective width of the base. And so we have um, less recombination going on at the base. If less electrons recombine at the base, that means those electrons that have not recombined are going into the collector. And so the collector current actually does increase slightly uh, with increases, uh, increased values of VCE because there is less recombination at the base. And so if the recombination current is smaller, that means the collector current is slightly larger. And so we can redraw our picture here in a little bit more accurate manner to say, okay, so after we reach the, uh, the VCE of 0.3 volts, there is actually a slight increase in collector current with increased values of VCE. And I'm exaggerating it here a little bit, but you can see that there is a slope to these lines. They're not totally flat. Um, this effect is called base width modulation. It's also known as the early effect, and that's just in honor of James Early, who was the American engineer who first observed um, this effect and published it in an article in 1954. And uh, it is modeled via a parameter called the early voltage. And so uh, the early voltage, the way we define it is we'll know that if we do the projections of these lines, they will all meet at a point along the VCE axis. It's not very well represented, but you can use your imagination and think that if you did the straight projections, they will all meet at a point. And that's actually the value of of that voltage is negative VA, VA in the early voltage, which again uh, models the base width modulation effect. So we could define the base width modulation effect as the um, slight increase in collector current with increases values with increased values of VCE due to the um, change in effective width of the base, the reduction in effective width of the of the base. Let me highlight that. That's early voltage. Um, the way we um, we model the early voltage in in our um, or we include the early voltage in our model of the transistor is if you remember we said the collector current uh, is related exponentially with the base emitter voltage in that IC is equal to IS e to the VBE over VT. VBE is the base emitter voltage. Uh, IC is the collector current. IS is just the saturation current for for any diode. Um, and again, you might say, well, the, you know, I don't remember that equation. This is actually the value for IE, the emitter current. And uh, if you recall from your electronics one or from your uh, lesson on diodes, this is just the expression of the exponential relationship between current and voltage across a diode, across a forward bias PN junction. Um, in this case, I've written IC because we have established already that we're going to make the approximation for an NPN transistor that um, IC is approximately equal to IE. So we have that exponential relationship, and we can see that um, uh, IC depends on, you know, certain things, uh, but amongst them, VBE, that's, that's the input voltage. Uh, but it's independent of VCE, the collector emitter voltage. The way we include the early voltage or, the, or that base width modulation in our model is that we multiply this times 1 plus VCE over VA. And so if we... Um, plot this new expression for IC, we will see that we will get exactly uh, that result in the lines, uh, a slight increase in uh, collector current with increases in collector emitter voltage. Uh, VT obviously is the thermal voltage, which you may remember from your lesson on diodes. Its value is uh, KT divided by Q, where K is the Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature and the Q is the elementary charge or the charge of the electron, and the value of it is approximately 26 millivolts at room temperature at 25 degrees. 
All right, so, uh, and this will be, again, that expression considering uh, the base width modulation effect. So our second order equation for our transistor. Thank you.